hello there. This is Elena and my channel Enough. Uh, today we will talk about several things. Uh, it is a day of defender of defenders in Ukraine, the holiday, and we will talk about that a little bit. Also, uh, as you know, I have lots of experience and. Uh, I lived in USSR, I lived in Russia, and um, all the news, basically, or most of the news I'm talking about, I'm trying to kind of filter it through the prism of my own experience and my knowledge about the war in Ukraine. I have uh, lots of information about uh, the war in Ukraine and about time period uh, from about 2013 to uh, 2022. And uh, we will talk a, a little bit about the news on the front in Ukraine, also about uh, my experience with life in USSR and why Russians are so brainwashed. Also, there would be some information about what is happening in Russia right now, about mobilization and how it's going and uh, why we shouldn't trust Putin. And in the end, we will see what is happening in Russian schools. How murderers and bandits come into Russian schools to teach children. And that's what would be what we will be talking about today. First of all, I want to congratulate Ukrainians with the Defenders Day. Their heroes standing up not only for their country and the freedom of Ukrainians. But it's more than that. Right now, I want everyone to realize that Ukraine is the only thing which is standing between Russian butcher Putin with his imperial ambitions. Uh, we will see the evidence of that a little later today. And uh, the rest of the world. Europe, for instance, which is closer than, let's say, Canada or United States. So... Uh, that's what we will be talking about today. Brave Ukrainians losing their lives on the front for all of us right now. They are the guarantors that Putin will be stopped. That is why they're winning on the front. They're defending their motherland. They're defending their home. They're defending their families from Russian fascism. And about Russian fascism, we will talk a little bit later, not today. But today we will talk about what is happening in Ukraine and how it related to what I saw in USSR and so on. Uh, as you can see here, Mr. Zelensky went to the hospitals and he visited uh, people, giving them uh, awards and so on. Uh, President of Ukraine Zelensky is a brave man who stand up for his country together with his people. When he had a choice to flee, he did not. He's still in Ukraine. He was walking streets when a few days ago and uh, Putin was bombing several cities in Ukraine and Zelensky was there. Zelensky visited, visited front. Putin never visited front once. He's a bunker, scary cat dictator who is hiding from his own people and the trolls who decided to argue with me right now, you don't even know where Putin lives. This is one of the arguments I use with trolls because none of them know where he sleeps every night. Every Canadian knows where the Canadian Prime Minister lives. Every American knows where the American President lives. Nobody knows where Putin lives. No, he doesn't live in the Kremlin. Neither in his palace in the Black Sea coast. He's sitting in a bunker somewhere most of the time. And as you saw on the videos when he was sitting behind the table, he's so far away from everybody that it is disgusting. He's so afraid of everything, yet Zelensky visited front, Zelensky visiting people everywhere. In the hospitals, on the front, on the streets of Kiev, during bombing. That says something. Uh, as to the front, we could see a little bit, this is from 11th to 13th, we could see uh, 
This is near Kharkiv region. This is how the Ukrainian forces advancing. And that's about it. And so is in uh, around Kherson, which is here. Uh, let's watch this group. So, so far, slowly Ukrainians going towards Kherson. And Mikolaev get bombed and so on. It is, it is going ahead. Ukrainian army is advancing. So, after the blow up in Crimea, the Crimean bridge, uh, Putin responded like a coward by bombing a whole bunch of cities in Ukraine. And we will talk about it in a minute. Right now I wanted to show you a few videos from Truha uh, in English. Uh, it's a, a Twitter channel. And this is what Ukrainians doing on the front. This is attack on the Russian tank. And uh, Ukrainians advancing, and now they shooting can shoot in some military targets in the Russian city of Belgorod as well. You can watch the whole video here, and uh, this is what happening in the Russian city of Belgorod. Uh, some attacks was Ukrainians, but some was just Russian missile go rogue and fell on the Russian city. It isn't funny, it's just saying in what stage Russian army is, in what terrible corruption did to Russian army. But this was most likely a Ukrainian strike on the power plant. And so on. And lots of people lost the... they lost uh, power. And this is how it looks like. And one of the rockets just basically turned around and fell in the Ukrainian city of Belgorod, which is right here. That's what we were talking about. So the war is already on Russian territory and already for a while there I was talking about the same things. Uh, uh, some shots was fired at some targets in Belgrade. We know it for a while. Putin still hiding all of this and lying to people. And that coward, that's what he does now. This is a BBC article about um, Ukraine war. Putin saying there would be no more massive strikes for now. Well, Putin lying all the time. So I wouldn't be relaxed about that. It can happen in any time again and again. Putin claims right now that mobilization is going well and 222,000 people out of 300 already mobilized. And... But yet he slips in his speech and he's saying that 16,000 of them already on the front. It's not even three weeks that like mobilization started yet. A bunch of untrained Russian soldiers, cannon fodder right now in Ukraine, dying there. For no reason whatsoever, but Putin's ambitions. And uh, according to BBC, uh, again, um, this is um, the map where the missile strike, which is all over Ukraine. Uh, different information from different sources about over 12 cities, which is uh, Kyiv, Sumy, Kharkiv, Dnipro, Zaporizhzhia, Krepivnitsky, Vinnytsia, Krimin. Хмельницкий, Житомир, Львов, Тернополь, Ивано-Франковск. And a lot of it. Like, just because Putin thinking that Crimean bridge blow up by Ukrainians, he decided to attack a whole bunch of cities. This is plain stupid. And many people was wondering why Russia spending that much money because it's very expensive rockets. They don't have many of them. Wouldn't it be smarter to use them on the battlefield? Instead of wasting it on the playgrounds and the parks in Kyiv and the civilians in all over all over Ukraine, 
Yes, it would have been if Putin would have been smart. Well, I'm not saying he's stupid. Uh, he's smart in his own way and he's doing it for a different purpose. He's not a military man, he's a politician. Also, he pretends to be. Uh, basically, after massive uh, counteroffensive in Ukraine around particular uh, Kharkiv region, they liberating basically whole Kharkiv region, they liberated. Uh, around the Zoom, around Liman, especially Liman was big, big counteroffensive here. Uh, Putin understood that he uh, he's losing the war. And even some propagandists and pro-Putin uh, crazy people who still thinking Putin is a good guy, even they started to question him and started to think that he is uh, losing. And all that attack on a whole bunch of Ukrainian cities. I heard even in like Odessa, lots of lots of cities were hit. More than what I saw just now on the map of BBC. Uh, basically, this was necessary just to buy Putin some time. Just to satisfy some bloodthirsty bastards who is now happy and cheering for killing Ukrainians, killing peaceful people, bombing cities and saying that it's a good idea and we should do more hitting targets like uh, power stations and leave people without electricity and so on. That is why now when there was power station hit in Belgrade and about 2000 people left without electricity for a, few, for a while, uh, oh boy, that's such a big deal. But when they're doing it to Ukraine for months, for over half a year, almost what, eight months, it's okay. And now they were cheering and happy that children died, that people died, and peaceful people, civilians died. I'm not even saying about when army men dying in Ukraine, Ukrainian army men. So Putin did it just to cheering up his crowd, basically. He wasted money. He wasted resources. He is not acting like a sane man. He not acting like a. He just trying to buy time. He doesn't have any plan. If you thought ever that he had a plan, forget it. He just doing whatever he feels like at the moment. That's about it. And that is why he doing that kind of stuff, because he wanted his support group still supporting him, and they do right now for a few minutes until they find out that. Ukraine will take Kherson, for instance. The more failures on the front, they will soon forget that happiness that they are attacking and they are some sort of a winning or something like that. And that's what's happening to the people who get mobilized. This guy, Martinov, Alexey Alexandrovich. He was, he got to the army on about September 23rd and October, October 10th he already died. Meanwhile in Russia, uh, according to Popular Politics channel and few other channels, I'll just show you in a second. Uh, people finally in Moscow and St. Petersburg started to understand what was happening in other parts of Russia, what was happening in the so-called Donetsk Lugansk republics, uh, which they were came in to liberate them, to help them. That's what was happening to their men. They were grabbed on the streets and thrown into the army without training, without anything. They was dying by bunches. And now it's happening to Moscow and St. Petersburg people. Look at this. То же самое происходило на многих других станциях. По словам... This was, man was grabbed near metro station in Moscow. Очевидцев происходило это примерно так. Полицейские останавливали людей для проверки документов. Стоящий рядом представитель военкомата звонил с просьбой проверить фамилию, после чего человеку выдавали заполненную на его имя повестку. Uh, 
and he was calling to his office and find out the when they find out the name of the person uh, they just write him paper that he's supposed to go to the army and give it to him right away on the place Около 200 человек забрали в Москве из строительных общежитий. Полицейские врывались в комнаты, забирали паспорта и затаскивали людей в автобусы. About 200 people were grabbed in Moscow in a kind of like a hostels where there are people living who is working in the construction field in Moscow. Uh, police was uh, running basically into their rooms, grabbing their passports. And people were grabbed into the army. Everybody who is before 40 and who served in army stay. Everybody else can leave. The general says. Citizens of Russian Federation who was before 40 years old has to stay. Everybody else must go. So this is what was happening and. Uh, Moscow and St. Petersburg and St. Petersburg people were saying, uh, the authorities of St. Petersburg saying that uh, basically a hunt, man hunt for the men in apartments, um, they were saying that um, the police was uh, on duty basically in the entrances of the big apartment buildings. Uh, they were saying, well, nothing like that happening. Uh, they just, um, they're not really hunting for the men, but they kind of, they kind of there. And the men basically couldn't leave their apartment buildings. If you are a man who's supposed to be by age and stuff in the army, as soon as you try, try trying to come out, you're going to get grabbed and get thrown in the army. And that's what happened to many men in St. Petersburg and stuff like that. And uh, Moscow recruiting office was denying that they was giving uh, papers to people near metro stations. Uh, and it's a lie because that's what was happening and we just saw some video footage of that. Uh, besides, uh, it's very dangerous in Moscow and St. Petersburg to use, uh, to just walk in the city for the men and just use metro because there are a whole bunch of uh, face recognition software uh, basically russians can even pay the bank stuff through the bank by their face there is a face uh, software which can allow you to use the banks and there are lots of cameras in moscow and st petersburg on the streets and especially in the metro which they basically run the software it was done for mm, a lot of time and people were arrested right now people uh, in the past Sometimes um, that software prevented Russians from uh, prevented Russians from protesting because if you was noticed in some protests and then your face was, was recognized and there is a, some protest was supposed to be in Moscow or St. Petersburg, you enter metro just to get to there and they were grabbed and they were thrown in jail for a few days just for they didn't take part in the protest. Right now, Moscow authorities and St. Petersburg authorities using that uh, using that uh, electronic uh, option to grab people and throw them in the army. Uh, another bad thing about technology is not just because of the, it's not just that software, it's just lots of cameras, lots of uh, people um, basically spying on themselves. Like we are using Facebook, Russians has a classmate site or Vkontakte network and so on. People voluntarily giving up a whole bunch of information about themselves, and we do it as well uh, in uh, free countries. It's just our government still government's still not put in dictatorship. But if they choose to, they very easily can find out a lot of information about you and use that information accordingly. Like uh, in the past, KGB officers, and I know about that, I've seen some of them in the past in my life, that they were basically doing a, a lot of job, a lot of work, a lot of effort to find out who is uh, this person A, who are they, his friends, who he associated with, uh, where have, have he been on certain day and time and this and that. Right now, it's just enough to open social network and know the name of his cat and what he had for breakfast, who is all his friends. You just grab them all and then you find out 
who is gonna give you information about him and so on. And it's very easy to do. Basically, people spying on themselves and voluntarily telling it to the anybody who will they will to listen and, and spies and uh, secret services agents because they volunteer that kind of information. When I was trying to do a commercial through Facebook on my on my book, I was astonished how much Facebook know about us. They could recommend me uh, people who has a birthday coming up in the three days or people whose friends or relatives birthday coming up in the three days. So my advertisement would have been showing to people who are looking for a gift for the people who they love. Also, they know who is on the business trip this time, who may be bored sitting in a hotel room in some, unknown, some uh, city far away from home, which they might would like to read a book. And all of this information uh, and more sites like Facebook, sites like classmates, sites like uh, Vkontakte in Russian, uh, know about us. They know about, about us a lot, thanks to us ourselves. Another thing is that 5G thing, which they started to use and want to use in Russia and so on. Uh, it's not about conspiracy theories, it's not gonna give you, turn you into a zombie or anything like that. It's a lie and it's a not true. What it does, it just provide Moscow authorities, for instance, with a fast internet, fast enough to immediately recognize people who are walking in the metro, so they can be arrested and captured. That is why internet have to be some sort of a monitored in every free country. There's supposed to be rules for using it, rules for keeping that information and protecting people's privacy and life, because this is what it used in, in Russia. And this is how how it is work, how it is working right now against Russians. It can be used, depends on the government in every country and so on. So far it's used in Russia. And uh, meanwhile, Ukraine get control and liberated six, 1,620 towns and villages and so on. And this is a big, big achievement to the Day of Defenders of Ukraine. And um, in Russia, people were suffering from Putin's regime for a long time. This is Mr. Boyka saying what was happening to people who get mobilization in Russia. Uh при этом Тыва достаточно бедный регион. И когда забирают кормильца... He is talking about Тыва. It's a little republic inside Russia. Very poor region. He is saying, and when they taking away the men of the family, supporter of the family, financial... person who bring financial gain to the family, to the army, that's what they do. Семья реально голодает. The family will be starved because they men get taken into the army. Власти Тывы нашли очень изящное и хорошее решение, как компенсировать семье потерю кормильца. В Тыве теперь каждой семье, где забрали мужика на фронт, взамен будут выдавать барана. Это не шутка, это не... This is not a joke. For every... If the man is the main financial support for the family in Тыва, they taking him for the front, but to the family they will give a ship. This is not a joke, this is serious. In some places they're giving them a bunch of uh, firewood for winter. In the past there was a video on the internet very popular that they killed their son in Ukraine and they give to the family a uh, Lada, the car. But in Tewa, it's a poor region. They should be happy if they get a ship instead of their husband uh, who went to the war. They can get a ship. Не анекдот, то вчера в спецэфире рассказал, все подумали, что это анекдот такой. She said I said it yesterday in my special uh, video, and people were thinking it's a joke. No, it's not. Нет, реально, каждой семье мобилизованного в ТВ власти обещали привести и выдать барана, уже uh, начали uh, делать. Я вчера в спецэфире, когда рассказывал, у меня даже uh, тут... Uh... He said the authorities of TV already started to give those ships to the people. 
латвийские власти. То есть, если кому-то кажется, что обмен неравноценный, баран цене, а и можно пол барана давать, то это, пожалуйста, на ктивинским. He said if somebody thinking it's not equivalent exchange and maybe one ship is too much for the one person, maybe they should give a half a ship to people, then please talk to the authorities of Tiva. Властям предложайте. Но почему-то не все тывинские семьи, тувинские, э, не все тувинские семьи оценили э, фишку. Давайте посмотрим видео с тувинских протестов. But somehow not every family in that region uh, appreciative enough. Let's see the protests there. Uh, respectful citizens, we asking you to leave the territory. Please clear up the territory. If you not obey, we gonna. Давайте еще одно из ТВ. После объявления мобилизации Европа отреагировала наконец-то. After the mobilization in Russia was uh, announced, finally Europe decided to react on it. С 2012 -го года Путин удерживает у власти только благодаря репрессиям. Since 2012, Putin is holding to power just because of repressions. С 2012 -го года 10 лет в России людей бьют на митингах, натурально бьют, задерживают. Сож... 10 years in Russia people were beating up on the meetings. They were arrested, they were tortured. 10 лет оппозиция отхватывает за протестные митинги. Европа отреагировала. Они задумались, не стоит ли прекратить поставки электрошокеров и слезоточивого газа в Россию. Finally, European Union started to think about maybe It's not for sure, it's just maybe. We should stop providing Russia with electroshockers and the tear gas. Yeah, maybe we should. I would think you should. For all these years, apparently Europe was giving Russian dictator electroshockers and tear gas to deal with the protesters and so on. Uh, now I want to tell you about A little bit about Leonid Brezhnev. He was the Russian leader, uh, chief of the Communist Party of the USSR, and the leader of the Soviet Union. Why I decided all of a sudden talk about Brezhnev? Because a little bit it will give you understanding why Russians are reacting how they're reacting, why they're doing what they're doing. Uh, basically, um, I was in school at the time, uh, I was a teenager, I was around 12 or so, it's probably grade 6 in Russia, in school. I remember the day when Brezhnev died. Uh, I came to school and I see how scared people were. People, like children, uh, teachers and so on, and the idea was Brezhnev died, what gonna happen to us now? What we gonna do? Other countries gonna now attack us, they're gonna get us, they're gonna, who knows, the war might start, anything, like, it was basically fear. People wasn't upset he died, but people were feared that what gonna happen to us. You know, to be nothing, nothing happened. Because back then and now, nobody attacking Russia, no, or Soviet Union, nobody care about Russia, nobody... Nobody need to attack Russia for any reason whatsoever, but this was my experience and now and I understand a lot that how much people were brainwashed then. People were agreeing with the war in Afghanistan. They call it uh, not a war, they call it uh, we're gonna give our international debt, international duty or something. You know what kind of debt possibly Russia could have to Afghanistan? So we could have to sell, send our troops there, that's basically where died people, men who I could have married, my potential grooms, basically my potential fiancés, they died there in Afghanistan. 
Many of them came back, wounded. Many of them came back after the atrocities they commit there. Many of them came back losing limbs and they couldn't find themselves in the peaceful life. They had post-traumatic stress. They Nobody were dealing with it. Many of those Afghan veterans become gangsters because that's only they could do, to kill. And we didn't know. I was still relatively little at the time and not little enough, but again, the information about that was very limited. We didn't know a lot of things until I was already grown up and I was going in a public transport and ahead of me was sitting a couple of gun veterans and they were talking how they basically put to a knife the whole village of innocent civilian civilians because maybe they were terrorists. Just maybe. And it shocked me so much that at the time I started to understand what actually was happening. And uh, that was scary. And uh, another similar situation was happened later, years later, when there was war in uh, Chechnya. It was about the same situation. It's funny how sometimes it works. That it's not funny, but I mean, it's just a coincidence. Similar things. I heard from Chechen veterans, from Chechnya, a uh, little republic inside Russia who rebelled against, who didn't want to be part of Russia. And for over 10 years, there was a horrible war going on there, which we didn't know much about. And I'm not better than everybody else as well. Because at the time, we didn't think that the right of nations to self-determination uh, even exists. They are part of USSR, they are supposed to be part of USSR, that's what people thought. And that's what exactly Putin did with Chechnya, bombed it to the ground. And now he trying to do the same thing with Ukraine. But now we have internet, now we have lots of knowledge from everywhere, we have YouTube, we have a whole bunch of information. That is why now we have a chance to know. And partly my channel is one of these uh channels who provide the truthful information about that and i really encourage russians to educate themselves you don't have to waste nine years researching i did it for you all you have to do watch my video and verify information i provide then you would know what actually happening and i don't believe that anybody now with almost eight months of the war in ukraine still don't know what happening and yet there are people in russia who is uh, right now not only supporting Putin and happy about bombing the peaceful cities in Ukraine, but they actually, partly it's a teachers, partly it's a workers of the some uh, city, uh, like a gas, uh, city gas, city water works, certain services in the city, which providing water and gas to the city buildings and so on. They used to give those papers to people, to the men, which live in the apartment buildings mostly, to go to the war. And some of them volunteer to do that. They're not even forced to, they're not scared for their life. That's why they're doing it. No, they, f they volunteer to do that. They volunteer to give someone the paper which might send him to die. That is disgusting and people should really educate themselves. Meanwhile, uh, popular politics also Alexander Makashenitz did, uh, for instance, uh, research about what happening to the wives of people who get mobilized. Apparently, they have a special groups created in some Telegram channels and some social networks. And let's see what they are talking about in these groups. Uh, partly it's about cooking, uh, cats, children. Partly is this. А я мечтаю, чтобы эту долбаную Америку затопила наконец-то, или какая-нибудь катаклизма напала, чтобы уже отстали от России. Весь мир против нас настраивают, сволочи, хреном. This woman saying, Екатерина Воронова, I dream so that bastards America was drowned at last or some cataclysm or catastrophe happened there, so they leave Russia alone. They 
making whole world hate us, bad guys. And swear word, it mean didn't happen. It will not happen. That's her opinion. That's America doing. That's next one, Victoria. Can I please tell my opinion? I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Please excuse me. This group was created for we could to ever unite it and together waited for our husbands, discuss something. But every time I come, it just, um, I have a feeling that they came to the news channel. I'm very sensitive and I'm very uh, worried. That's why I don't read news. Uh, because uh, if uh, something happened uh, major, I will find out anyway. Please, let's talk less about news, please. And please, uh, uh, sorry if I offended anybody. God, how stupid need to be her husband taken away from her on the war. She didn't even find out why he is on the war, why he taken away from her to die. And she doesn't want to hear news, no. That there is a joke going on in Russian, um, in internet, that like, when uh, son and father in the same truck going to the war, and son asking father, Dad, why are we going to the war? And the father saying, I don't know, son, I'm not interested in politics. That's what they talking about also about cats and about how to dress up their husband to go to war to die, where to get the money and what they're gonna do, how they gonna who's gonna look after children, some of them complaining about that, but some of them just talking about food and uh, cooking recipes and stuff like that. Good luck to you getting your husbands back from the war. They will never be the same. Their psychology would be badly damaged and it would be terrible. And then the cherry on top, that's what's happening in Russian schools. In the uh, Krasnodar region, uh, one school is reporting, this is Medusa, a very interesting site, it has lots of information. Uh, Let's see if there is a, in English this article. No, I guess not. They invited the soldier from Wagner Group, the mercenary, to the special. Uh, now, right now, they brainwashing Russian children, and they created special uh, lecture, special lesson, uh, which called the talks about the important things, and. They decided that they, they invited a guy in the balaclava who brought them his medals and uh, weapons what they using during the battle. And they were saying the kids was very interested. And in the end of the lesson, they write a letter to the front and so on. And after the outrage in the media, uh, they were trying to say, oh, no, 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 that wasn't the Wagner Group guy. And they're trying to take away the information about it and stuff like that. But the point is... Russian government basically uh, brainwashing your children in that in the, for your taxpayers' money, and they inviting Russians are so kind of was delicate about oh our children shouldn't know that and our children shouldn't know this so and our government thank you to our government they protecting our children not allow them to watch stuff on TV because it's parents uh, to some videos some movies not they not appropriate for children. Yet they inviting a bloody murderer. I have a, on my website, on my uh, YouTube channel, I have a video about uh, the killer and cowboy cat who was uh, chopped uh, genitals of the Ukrainian soldier, captured Ukrainian, captured Ukrainian soldier. These guys were from the Wagner group. These people were torturing, raping women, torturing people uh, and killing people and they posting it themselves. Yet they invited the murderer in the class, grade 3. It's 3A class, they said. To the children. It's okay, that's fine. Which he will tell them, probably didn't even wash all the blood from under his fingernails, from dead Ukrainians. And he coming to children to school. School number 13. Stanitsa Privolnaya, Konevsky District, Krasnodarsky region, Krasnodar region. And instead of teaching children 
school is used as a propaganda source. And here is the example of the good teaching of Russian schools. This Russian <laughs> destroyed Russian uh, military uh, vehicle says to Berlin, not to Berlin. They can't even spell the name of the German capital properly. That's a Russian education to you. Meanwhile, and again, the fact that Russian people fighting in Ukraine for no reason whatsoever, it's a lack of education and stupidity. But this is what it will end up. Russian army will be destroyed just like this, just like this vehicle. Who is thinking they fighting in World War II. Otherwise they wouldn't write to Berlin onto their tank and so on. And uh, down with Putin. Putin is a war criminal and everyone who su supported him should be held responsible. I can't wait until Putin will be in the, in the court in Hague or in Ukraine, in Mariupol, for instance. Uh, and he will be there and so will be propagandists and so will be the teachers who did that job to did that to the children of Russian Federation. And freedom to Ukraine, freedom to Russia from Putin's regime, freedom to all political prisoners in Russia. Thank you for your attention and have a great day or evening. Please educate yourself.